Welcome to the new video um, and in this uh, video we are going to discuss about the principle of maximum likelihood estimation. Um, this technique is very popular. Um, wherever you see data, wherever you see statistics, um, this method you will find it everywhere. Okay, Wherever it is data mining, machine learning, statistical signal processing, every, everywhere where you have to do, we have the collection of the data and you do some estimation and this is the most basics and most popular estimation techniques that we have. Um, and it is quite powerful as well. Um, although the name looks quite complicated, but it's a very simple um, way of doing the estimation. And um, what I'll try to do is, I will try to make sure that um, you uh, understand this. Um, as the name suggests, we are focusing on the implied concepts. So whatever is not captured in the books outside, um, which is implied, I'll try to capture it here. And um, I'll try to simplify the subject as much as possible. Okay, and not to be worried about this, it is very simple estimation method. Um, once you know what is it all about, you will find it ridiculously easy. Okay, and um, so what we are going to do um, here is we will build the case, um, we will do a setup for the maximum likelihood, um, then um, we will derive the uh, few equations for maximum likelihood. They are very simple, very easy to understand, and I will also show you a live demo and a practical implementation of maximum likelihood estimation and then I will finally show you a small shortcut um, to do the estimation in maximum likelihood. Okay, so let's start off um, with the setup for maximum likelihood. Okay, so let's begin with the setup. Okay, so um, what we'll do is we'll draw, we'll draw some diagrams and uh, we'll try to make this more interesting, okay? Um, so the setup is something like this. Um, let's say that I have got a collection of containers. Okay. Um, so let's say that um, I have container one, container two, container three, and so on. Okay. I have got like n such containers, and within those containers, I am having. Uh, I'm having some data points okay or you can say that well um, you have some balls or you have some uh, something anything that you can um, relate it with some data okay so let's say that all these containers have got some data in it and you can name this as one two three four or whatever you want to name okay so um, the condition is that well um, the data in each of these containers so uh, let us call this guy as C1, um, C2, C3, and Cn. Okay, and the condition is that the data that is that you have got in this container, and the data that you have got in this container, and this one and this one, they are all independently generated. It means that they are not related to each other. Okay. So the condition is well, they are ind independent and identically distributed. Okay, they are all independent and identically distributed. This is the condition that we have in all the containers. And so, um, well, um, you might get confused that why it is independent, identically distributed. So you can just simply take the dice, okay, and um, you can simply roll on the dice, and whatever the numbers that you get, uh, you can place these numbers here, okay, and then you can have another set of uh, uh, trials from the dice and then you can put these the, those numbers here and so on so the idea is that whenever you um, get any number from the dice from the trials um, every successful numbers they are basically independent of each other okay they don't rely on the occurrence of the previous numbers so that is what the understanding is that well um, they are independent identically distributed okay um, or um, if I take some other example, like um, let's say that you are drinking the coffee um, at 3 o'clock uh, in the afternoon and um, in this container you have a data, for example, where it is raining outside and for some reason you are saying that, well, um, there is no correlation between you drinking the coffee or it is raining outside. For in your particular case, okay. Sometimes the people may say, "Oh, wow, uh, it's raining outside. Let's have a cup of tea or coffee." Um, in that case, they are dependent on each other. Okay, 
So um, you can relate this data in any different ways as you want. The whole idea is that the collection of data that I have in these containers, basically, the way I have produced them, they are independent of each other. Okay, still it is a bit abstract, but don't worry about it. Um, we will see it when we see, uh, have a practical example on it. Okay, so let's just assume that well, we have a set of containers and in which I have a set of collection of the data, and these data points are independent, identically distributed. Okay, now identical distribution means that well, <coughs> since I have the data, then it means that um, we are talking about the probability, right? So we are going to attach some distributions to them, and. Um, and communication systems, for example, uh, most uh, most of us will be more bothered about the Gaussian distribution. So um, let us attach some distribution to the data. So I'm saying that well, okay, um, this guy has a distribution which is Gaussian. They all are Gaussian distribution. Okay, they are all independent and identically distributed. They all are Gaussian distribution. And when we describe about the Gaussian distribution, that means that well, okay. Um, we will say that well, it is parameterized by two parameters, right? One is the mean and the other one is variance. So usually it is represented by mu and sigma square, right? So this is what the basic setup we have. So basically what I'm saying is we have the set of containers. Each container has a collection of data. All the data, since it is the data and we are talking in terms of the probabilistic distribution, well, they all have the distribution and all these distributions, um, they are normal distribution with some si mu and sigma variance okay sigma square okay so <coughs> we have the setup now the idea is that um, let's go one step forward and now what I'm going to do is um, I'll do something very different here so um, I'm going to collect um, the data elements from each of these containers okay so let's say I'm going to pick up one data point from this guy I'm going to pick up one data point from this guy. Let's select one point from here. And let's select one point from here. And let me call it as x1. From this guy, let me call it as x2. From the other one, let me call it as x3. And x4. And so on up to xn. Okay, so now I have a new collection of data points which have come from these containers which um, how the Gaussian distributed identically distributed data it themselves and I call this collection so let me name this as D okay so I will call this collection as D and this is what I have so basically the data is what x1 x2 x x4 to xn and I am naming it as D as um, to symbolize for the data points okay so now, since I have D, which is again the collection of the set of samples, um, which have which are independent and identically distributed, um, I can have the probability distribution of these data as well. Okay. So, um, so the idea is that um, since I have the probability distribution, okay. So let's first of all um, make a setup that okay. Since I have D. Um, which is the collection of the data, I can attach a probability distribution to this also. And let us call this as the probability, let us call this as the probability of D. Okay, but this is this D is not completely independent probability distribution, it is a conditional, it depends upon a parameter that we call it as theta, okay, and theta is the parameter on which this probability distribution is built upon. Now, where did this theta come from? So, we know that well um, the samples that we have got has come from the Gaussian distribution okay and that is the our basic underlying assumption and so when we have this data we also assume that well okay um, it is going to have a distribution and this distribution will be parameterized so we know that well hang on a second um, this distribution was parameterized over mu and sigma square so um, this distribution also has to be parameterized over something and we call it as well this parameter as theta so I say that well okay I have the distribution um, which is parameterized over theta so what does theta the maximum likelihood estimation tell us the um, the official um, equation for the maximum likelihood estimation uh, or the notation of a maximum estimation is theta MLE well this is what widely used I, I should not say it is official but this is what is widely used across so theta MLE is basically argmax okay don't be uh, petrified by these equations um, they are uh, very 
simple once you know how it, what is going on there it is extremely simple just don't be uh, petrified by the roman numbers here okay so um so it's basically arg max theta um for all range of a greater subset of theta uh which maximizes my probability which maximizes my probability of data given theta okay so this is what um, the equation or the notation for the maximum likelihood estimation looks like and what it tells us is that um, I have a distribution probability of data given theta and what it says is that if I sweep my theta uh, from the different sets of theta which I have and um, the value of theta which maximizes this probability distribution is my theta MLE okay this is what it tells it's very simple and but um, this is still very abstract right um, we need to have a, some kind of a mathematical base and some kind of a numerical understanding on this so um, to build the mathematical base um, let's go and uh, um, okay um, I'm running short of